Oui, c'est bon. Oui. Uh, just a, a word before. So we have six presentations today. So we need to be on schedule. So we're gonna, since there are six presentations, I don't think that uh, anybody can uh, uh, listen to six presentations in a row. So we're gonna make a small break during, uh, after the first half of presentation. So after three presentation, 10 minutes, go pee, drink a glass of water or coffee, be back here to listen to the other three presentation. Uh, we also have very tight uh, schedule, so 20 minutes per, per speaker, plus 10 minutes question, and then uh, if there are any other interaction, please do it offline after the, the end of the old presentations. But shouldn't we do the same timing as the Is conference? This, I think it's 20 minutes, right, for the... For the mini conference, it's... Uh, it's, it's shorter. It's 18, 18 total. Yeah, 18 total. 18, okay. Uh, so... <laughs> Remind me what is the timing. I, I'm gonna chair the first three, and then uh, during the break we're gonna s randomly select another chair for the last three. And uh, so we, we should stick with to the to the timing. I know that uh, in, in in this presentation the timing will be about 20 minutes plus 10 minutes question, right? If I'm not wrong. So okay. otherwise, uh, like Nathar said, please uh, notify. So. Natalia, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Natalia Rosman. Uh, I'm a PhD student at the University of Vienna, Italy. I work upon the congestion control and the system center And today I would like to present our paper about uh, our hope of interest mechanism for content center network. Uh, I will start by providing a short introduction to content centric, centric networking architecture uh, in order to describe the most important uh, architectural features of CCN uh, useful for our work. And uh, where, then uh, I continue by discussing the traffic control problem in CCN and defining, by, uh, and defining the congestion in CCN node. Uh, then I present uh, uh, our core by core intra-shaped mechanism and its performance and his, its performance evaluation, oh, sorry, and its performance evaluation, uh, and the practical results obtained by uh, by the simulation uh, using the NS2. Uh, then I conclude and uh, discuss uh, the, the future. Uh, so the CCN uh, architecture was first proposed uh, by Van Jacobson and uh, the Park Research Group. Uh, in the paper network in content in 2009. Uh, for the time being, there is no main contribution on congestion control or traffic engineering in CCN, and uh, all congestion control solutions uh, for, for the existing networks uh, cannot be directly applied to the CCN because the, con the network conception is not the same. Uh, what is the difference uh, between CCN architecture as, and uh, the existing networks? Uh, first, uh, I, I have to say that there, there are two packet types. Uh, it's the interest packets or packets of, of request that uh, flow from a client to the network. And as a response, we have a chunk packet that flow from the network to the client. Uh, the path uh, for interest packets and the chunks and corresponding chunk packets are the same. Uh, the base role that, that exists in, uh, in the content center network that one interest correspond to only one chunk. <coughs> What's more, uh, every, every node of CCN network has a cache, and so content may be located anywhere in the network, and we don't know where, when we receive uh, the response. Uh, thus, the node architecture uh, has to support the content-based schemes because inside the CCN network there is only content. Uh, what about traffic control in CCN? Uh, as I said before, this uh, every node has a cache, and so the source uh, cannot be identified, and content uh, and content is, content is cached. We define the congestion as a situation of of airflow of the transmission buffer associated to an output interface and uh, it, 
this situation leads uh, to to the loss of data chip. Uh, how wh why why it occurs? So there is uh, there is two uh, two reasons for it. It, uh, it occurs when transmission buffers flow, and if input chance rate is higher than the output rate of the interface. So what we can do uh, to control uh, the situation, what we can do to, to avoid the situation, uh, we present uh, our hope by hope interface mechanism, or just hobbies, uh, that uh, has been designed uh, to anticipate the drop of data chance. Uh, due to the buffer overflow. It is not like TCP because TCP starts to react only after uh, after drop of, uh, of one segment. Uh, but but uh, the goal of our congestion control mechanism is to avoid the losses. So, uh, and what's more, we, we want to keep the average queue size around some, uh, some fixed value uh, called threshold. So we use the interest packet instead the chunks, instead the chunks packet. It's, it's one of the advantages of our mechanism because it makes our mechanism proactive. <coughs> Another advantage is that uh, this uh, doesn't depend uh, on, uh, on the end user behavior and uh, because, uh, because this algorithm is implemented directly to, to each node of the network. <coughs> Uh, why we, we have chosen the hope by hope congestion control schemes is that uh, first uh, it's, it's because the data source is not identified, and uh, the second reason is that uh, hope by hope scheme provides the feedback information more quickly than end to end scheme. Uh, so, for the advantage of our mechanism, uh, now more details about how does it work. Uh, here we present the single model of CCN router. We can see the uh, this is the router. Uh, the interest packet comes from uh, the client who is here to the network, and uh, as a response we have a chance from the network to the client. Uh, this buffer contains only the chance packets. Uh, the E of T is the number of packets. It's time it time T, and R is is the threshold B is buffer size. So uh, another interest interesting parameter is AFT. What is AFT is a response delay. Uh, it's like a round trip delay in TCP, but it is not really round trip delay because uh, it's not fixed. Uh, we will uh, we will see in the next uh, slides the the characteristics of AFT. So. Uh, now I explain how how does it work our mechanism. Uh, when chunk arrives into the buffer, we take all necessary settings and we compute the shaping rate. This shaping rate will be transformed to to the to the delay uh, called shaping time that will be applied to the interest packets in this queue. Um, so this delay might be sufficient to co to control the, the future chunk rate, and the, uh, and to keep the uh, to keep the queue length around some uh, around this threshold R. In this figure, you can you can see the the little delay for each interest packet that will be added in the system router. This delay called shaping time. <coughs> So what about the response due parameter? I, as I said before, it's not uh, it's not constant. So uh, we use this parameter in our mechanism as a control loop, and this parameter de depends on on the caching policy and the routing mechanism uh, applied in the network. And but, but we we suppose that that response delay should not change drastically in short time scales. It's, it means that uh, the data, uh, when data are in the same cache, the response delay for each chance will be constant. So during some time, the, <coughs> the response delay will be constant. So uh, the, process, the shaping rate computation process used this equation that consists of two parts. The first part of the equation uh, 
is the available capacity to sell the chunk, the tiny and the second part is uh, the left buffer capacity to keep uh, to keep the chunks. We can see that uh, if number e of t, the number of chunks in the queue, so we can see that e, if e of t uh, higher than uh, suited threshold, this part uh, becomes negative, and we must to decrease the shaping rate. In another case the shaping rate will be increased. Uh, uh, the H is a, is a very interesting parameter, the design parameter. <coughs> it represents uh, uh, the control mode. We will study the, the impact of this parameter and further. So, uh, first I define the conversation. The conversation is a stream of interest chunk pairs. So in the general case, uh, there is uh, some conversation for the router, and we need to divide the, the left buffer capacity between all captive conversation and time t. Uh, in our paper, we uh, we have used the fixed threshold that, uh, that the call R divided by number of active conversation, but uh, it's not really uh, it's not really good because uh, because some, any conversation uh, might uh, not need to use this uh, allocated part of the capacity. So, uh, so now we we have ma sorry we have modified this uh, this formula as follows. We use the, the relation between number of packets for given conversation divided by total Q length. So it means that we allow each conversation to get the part equal to are uh, multiplied by this uh, factor. Uh, according to the goal of our algorithm, uh, the Q size might uh, show to converge to, to the threshold R, and according to the analytical model that we have developed in our paper, the Q converges exactly, exactly to R, and for multi-conversation case, uh, the Q of each conversation converts to R prime, and the total Q length converts to R. So, uh, so, so the mechanism uh, in the analytical model, the mechanism works fine. Concerning the performance evaluation, we have obtained the, the practical result by uh, implementing our uh, by using our implementation of all this in uh, NS2. And uh, we have performed some, uh, some scenario from, from simple scenario to more complex one. Uh, in the simple scenario, we use uh, just one router with only one conversation. And with the multi-conversation scenario, in multi-conversation scenario, we are interested in uh, both machine. So we start from the simple scenario <coughs> with one and, and, uh, some and many conversations. So the simulation configurations are presented uh, on, this, on this slide. In order to take into account the, the variability of response delay, we have used a ran random value uniformly distributed in interval from 0 to 1. And this value is generated for every packet, every data packet. Well, so we have studied the behavior of our mechanism with the different value of H. So we can see uh, how it impacts. Okay, this figure represents uh, average Q size as a function of time, uh, the time is in, in seconds. You can see that uh, the Q, the average Q length converts to R. R is fixed on 100 packets. And we, uh, we see the burst, in this curve we see the burst in the, at the beginning. Uh, this, these bursts are due uh, to the interval when algorithm is not yet in operation. <coughs> what about uh, age? We see that higher age 
higher your age, the slower the rate, the, conversi the convergence rate. <coughs> we can observe the same uh, behavior for, for the multi-conversation scenario, but here we're interested in uh, the buffer, buffer sharing. So we have performed some uh, simulation scenarios with the different conversation rate. Uh, and uh, the rate of conversation one is the maximum rate, and then uh, the, rate of, the rate of conversation two is less than the rate of conversation one. So, uh, <coughs> so you can see that uh, the average Q for each conversation converts to R, R prime, and the total Q length converts to R. Uh, in this uh, simulation, R is fixed to 300, 300 uh, chunks. Now, the more the more complex scenario, the more interesting one, is uh, the scenario uh, the network of nodes. We use two conversations. The first conversation flows from client one to the node three, and the data for this conversation is in the cache of node three. The conversation two flows from client two to the server. The server uh, generates the, rest, the different responsibility for each uh, for each data payment. Uh, so we are interested in uh, the buffer state of node three and the ch chunk serial rate for for every conversation. In order to to better to study better this. Uh, this scenario, the conversation two start before conversation one. Then uh, during some time we have two conversations at the same time, and uh, and then the conversation two be becomes inactive. Okay, what what will happen? This figure present uh, illustrate the average Q length as a, as a function of time. Uh, we can see that uh, the Q is in T bef uh, until the conversation 1 starts. And then the Q starts to fill up and uh, converge to the objective. Concerning the chunk rate, uh, the, interval in the time interval from 0 to 20 seconds we have only conversation two, and so this conversation use all the uh, uh, lot of res resources, and at the interval from 20 seconds to 60 seconds, we have two conversations at the same time, and the rotor resources are divided a shared frame. When the conversation two becomes inactive, the conversation one starts to use all the uh, all, uh, known resources. We have also studied the multicast scenario. <coughs> it's, a, it's a very interesting scenario because we did the interest aggregation. Uh, we have performed the topology with, uh, with three clients uh, and the, the cap link capacity for each uh, interface are, are the difference. So the capacity of the first client uh, higher than capacity for, for the second uh, interface and uh, so so you, you can see that the the Q length for for the interface with the minimum capacity is convergence to, to R and another buffers are T. Uh, it's its behavior its behavior is logical because we use the minimal uh, the minimal capacity uh, to to compute the shaping plane. So so in this case uh, the the Q of, of the interface with the minimum capacity will converge to the to the R and the another buffer will be T. So uh, we have presented our whole by whole data shaping mechanism that uh, allow to 
Navi could adjust the interceding rate uh, in order to control the future return. Uh, what's more, we keep the, f the Q, Q length uh, around uh, some fixed threshold. Uh, we also explore its performance, and uh, we, we can conclude that uh, the mechanism is performed as designed. Uh, the future work will extend the analysis of, uh, of, the, of all this, and we, um, we will study more complex scenarios. So we will uh, consider the content of differentiation. Uh, we will explore the complexity and scalability of our mechanism and uh, interaction with uh, the eventual <coughs> error control mechanisms. Okay. If you have any questions, you can, uh, you can ask. <laughs> so, questions? It's nasty, but... <laughs> no, it's not nasty. It's uh, among the, the stuff of the future world, but if you decided to, 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 to place this functionality inside the, uh, each router, so what do you expect the overhead for, uh, for the queuing uh, management uh, will be? Because you, you talked about several uh, conversations, so the router must monitor the conversations. What do you? What is your feeling about the overhead for managing uh, uh, per, per flow, let's say, per conversation uh, state for the for the queue? Very interesting question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You have some mechanism. feeling about this, about the, the... So now, in our mechanism, we are based on the active mm -hmm. conversation, and uh, the question is about, uh, about the mm -hmm. key management. It's about the complexity. About the complexity of the scheme being implemented on the routers, because until now we know that all, all these congestion avoidance and uh, mechanisms are implemented at the edge. Of the network. So you put this intelligence inside the network, the and it seems, in a CCN perspective, a, a natural choice because things change in CCN. But mm -hmm. what do you expect the overhead to be for the for your network to, to, to be able to support this intelligence, support this congestion mechanism? Mm -hmm. uh, we have to consider the that uh, in re reality there is uh, there is main conversation in the network there is uh, there is too many conversations <laughs> in the network and uh, we don't yet uh, study the, the complexity of our mechanism but we have uh, but uh, we use the, um, only active conversation it means uh, that if uh, there is a, there is a packet in the queue, this conversation is, uh, is active. Uh, but in the case uh, when uh, we have uh, a lot of conversation at the same time, uh, we, uh, yes, we will explore it. Uh, but we do check accounting, so that's easy. So now the issue is how many conversations do you need to monitor? And I think the point is that you just need to monitor the active conversation, which basically have one chunk in the queue. So I, in that scale, I mean, that's something that many people have uh, studied in the past, starting from ATM. Now there's another issue, which is, is it realistic to basically embed this kind of mechanism in every single node? Well, that's another more global issue within CCM. And she knew the answer, but she's too uh, stressed. So you have to remember this. <laughs> Relax. The first talk. That's why. Thank you. But you might have other questions, of course. So <laughs> <laughs> wait to relax. Relax. <laughs> another question. This is what we do, but we, uh, in our in our performance analysis, we uh, use some the same parameter just uh, in order to study how it uh, <coughs> the, uh, its impact. Uh, on the behavior, but uh, in our paper we have developed an analytical model and uh, the, where we, we have demonstrated that each parameter has to be uh, 
has to be aligned with the with the rest of the with the rest of the okay. We change it possibly from chart to chart. That you take uh, a trend between zero and one second, basically. Uh, I have two questions. So, the first is whether the using a different interval has a huge impact on the performance. So, whether the control loop you propose is sensitive to this parameter. And the second one is, uh, in that case, you take every sample uh, at random. But it may that uh, it may be that if you achieve a cache or if you reach a cache, then this cache also have the subsequent chunks. So it may be that the the A parameter does not change that much from chunk to chunk, but it might change uh, suddenly from in, in different modes. So have you all considered having different processes instead of a completely uniform process for AT? So is the control loop affected by the range? And is the control loop affected by the kind of process you consider but for ADT? Okay, I understand the question. Uh, it's, uh, it's true that uh, we use uh, only the interval from zero to one. It's uh, maybe it's not sufficient, but we we change the uh, the delay for e for every packet. It means uh, in our in, in our performance analysis we, we use the different delay for each packet, and we don't use the delay uh, the same delay uh, during some time. Uh, but it's true that. Uh, that if uh, in reality it is possible, the, the uh, response delay will be uh, hardly ch changed, and uh, it will, uh, it will, uh, will to, uh, it leads uh, to the burst uh, in our system. So uh, we can uh, demonstrate. Uh, we we have tried to study the the influence of. Uh, <coughs> a response delay. So you you can see the the burst. This uh, this situation is due uh, to the um, is due when uh, when res real response delay uh, is higher than uh, predicted one. So we use the prediction mechanism in order to. Uh, uh, and uh, during this time, the buffer will be will be T, and then we have a burst. Uh, the burst, uh, but during this time, the uh, the response delay go to three seconds. For example, for for this uh, for this uh, study, uh, when when delay uh, when delay is constant, uh, the algorithm will set up, uh, will uh, will adapt. To, uh, to to converse to to R, so uh, so yes, the influence of response due is uh, the short burst. So time for a very last short question. <coughs> and meanwhile, I, I invite the second speaker to go <coughs> there and start. Uh, <coughs> We have time for a very small, nasty question. <laughs> 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 <laughs>